Good evening. I have practiced that you don't know for how long. You know, we pastors have so many morning services that we think the only time of the day is good morning. And so I was so worried that morning would come out, I practiced long and hard in my office. So thank you for your greetings, and let's do it again. Good evening. Good evening. It is good to be in the house of the Lord, and it is good to commit and to covenant together, not only locally, but regionally. And once again, endorsing our denomination and, of course, the world around us. I'm uh, Pastor Jamie Tiffin, uh, the pastor here at Grace, and it is good to welcome you as a, a host pastor to this celebration. We want to welcome you here and let you know that we Baptists, we build up the spiritual body in this room. And because the Bible says build up the other body, the physical we want to host you in our multi-purpose room, which is straight down the hallway. Uh, you can't miss it. And we want to have a time of fellowship, a time of refreshment, and some treats just to gather, to mix, and mingle. You're like our long-lost family members. We might know a few of your faces. We might know a few of your names. But we want to get to know you better in association. So please, we hope that you take some time before getting blown on your way home with the breeze that's out there. So well done making it here. But take some time, have a cup of coffee on us, mix, mingle, and have a fellowship before we go back to where the Lord has planted us. I'm going to invite Susan from Wheatley Baptist to come up and read a scripture. So today I'll be reading from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. Let's stand as we sing our opening hymn in the footprints of Jesus. I'm going to have it played through first, and then we will join. Amen. 
seated. Now before and as you were coming in, you may have saw a, an advertisement that's going to happen at the uh, end of March. Uh, actually, I didn't ask for it, but can you put the infusion up? This is a wonderful aspect of our association and an event that's coming up. Uh, Banwell uh, Community Church will be hosting this with many of the speakers coming from the CBOQ. And there it is. You're going to hear more about it. It's on Saturday, March the 30th. And this is to help infuse and build up our leaders, not just our leader pastors, but deacons, youth workers, children's workers, all the committees, music committee, all the different people that are actively working within your church, treasurers, whatever. We want to be able to build them out and build them up. So we hope that you'll mark your calendar, $10, and that will also include our lunch and we hope that you will automatically go home, put that on your calendar, and say, I'm going to choose to be there because we all need to be encouraged. We all need to be appreciated and invested in. And here we have the opportunity in our own backyard to have these speakers come. Worship times, teaching times, fellowship times. I hope that you'll take full advantage of that. I'm going to invite our moderator, uh, Pastor Gord Tetley, to come up and have our prayer to begin our worship aspect. Let us pray. Gracious God, we praise you, Lord God. We gather tonight for a special occasion, Lord God, as we, as Lord God, we induct three shepherds to three flocks. And Lord God, we, as we, Lord God, as we set this evening apart to dedicate these men to your service, Lord God, we pray that your spirit, Lord God, would just lead this evening. That Lord God, by your spirit, you would draw us into your presence and that you would prepare not just these pastors, but us as their congregations for your service. Lord God, we just praise you. We bow before you in awe of you. And we surrender ourselves to you tonight. Lord, this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I think it would be good to acknowledge some of the reasons in which why we are here. Two out of the Three churches that we're inducting their pastors in uh, were because of retirement. Uh, stand, can you stand up for a second? And I'm not sure, is uh, Dr. Alex Gray, uh, not Alex Gray. <laughs> is Dr. Alex here? Moyer? There he is. Ladies and gentlemen, combined. <laughs> those two gentlemen in combined had over 70 years of ministry, of dedicating themselves to the Lord. May God bless and keep the two of you. Wheatley Baptist pastor had moved on to their Belleville uh, calling and leaving that open, and that's what brings the third church here. But I think it is good, once again, to say thank you to those leaders who served faithfully and longevity uh, within that calling. So, uh, Pastor Stan, Pastor Alex, God bless you in your retirement and uh, filling pulpits probably still, and enjoying those green pastures. May God bless you. One more round of applause and thanks.
great and marvelous you are, and how you have showered down us with many blessings, and called us into your service to go ye therefore to all the world. Father, as we gather here in this place of worship, in this hallowed ground called the sanctuary, may we honor you with our praise, our adoration, every word spoken, every footstep taken, so that you would be, be glorified both now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Now it gives me great pleasure to introduce a friend of mine, bring him up here, and to be able to open up the word and encourage us from the Bible, I now invite Reverend Brian Morgan. Good evening, everybody. Jamie begged me to take the 45 minutes he offered me to make him look good, uh, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I got to tell you a funny story when I saw those, uh, you know, the way they were adapting there and the words were different, stuff like that, and we just kind of got a chuckle out of that. But, you know, you just sort of flow with it. We're in, in a worship service. We're here to uh, present our praise and adoration before God. That's the most important thing. Years ago when I was pastoring in Petrolia as associate pastor, my wife and I were doing an evening service at a nursing home. And... Um, she said, so we had no accompaniment, so she said, well, it's no problem, Brian. I'll sing the alto part. You just sing the, you know, the melody part. No problem. I've never been so happy that 50 to 75% of the people were at least hard of hearing, if not deaf. <laughs> I could not stay on key. I, I, with Ruth singing, my wife's name is Ruth, too. With her singing the alto part, I couldn't stay on, on key. So finally, she just did one of these, turned aside and said, Brian, forget it. Let's just sing the melody. <laughs> we'll just cut our losses. So sometimes you just got to sort of go with it. I want to share uh, just a brief reflection tonight from uh, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33. So we are having an induction service tonight. It's very important. You know, some churches we've kind of skipped over this. Is it really important? You know, we've already hired the person. All these pastors actually have been at their post for a number of months, actually dating back to last year. So it's February. They started, I think David started in Wheatley in July. Uh, Jamie, I think August 1st was your date. And I'm not sure, Tim, what your official starting date was at Banwell, but they all started last year. So think, well, why are we doing this? So important that we recognize the calling of a pastor to their, their current post. I think that's very important because they have a, a job to do, as it were, from the Lord, a calling that's specific for such a time as this. Listen to what it says there in Ezekiel chapter 33. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, speak to your countrymen and say to them, when I bring the sword against the land and the people of the land choose one of their men and make him their watchman, and he sees the sword coming against the land and blows the trumpet to warn the people, then if anyone hears the trumpet but does not take warning and the sword comes and takes his life, his blood will be on his own head. Since he heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning, his blood will be on his own head. If he had taken warning, he would have saved himself. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet to warn the people, and the sword comes and takes the life of one of them, that man will be taken away because of his sin. But I will hold the watchman accountable for his blood. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. You know, each of these three pastors got to the position they're in because those churches, Grace Baptist Church, Banwell Community Church, Wheatley Baptist Church, those three churches uh, at some point or other gathered people together, got a committee. We call it a pulpit committee or a search committee. They may have posted on our website or not, whatever, uh, a calling to see who their next pastor would be. Go through that process. You, you fill out a uh, you know, resume. Uh, type of thing, and there's several that came to each church as they were considering different candidates for the job. And it's not something that's not like an eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Like just, oh well, is he is he breathing? Does he have a pulse? Great, he's, he's applies the job. You know, it's got to be more than that. So you know, e each each of our churches, we have a specific little area that we're in where, where God's called us to uh, various people groups, um, you know, neighborhoods, this type of thing. It takes a specific pastor with a specific calling and gifting to be a, a fit and a match for those areas, you know. So even our Western Association, we're very diverse. If you look at it, um, we have smaller communities, bigger communities, smaller churches, bigger churches, just very diverse and ethnically uh, diverse as well. So it takes a, a particular pastor that's specific to that calling 
for that time of, uh, you know, such a time as this. Ezekiel makes it very clear here that it said here, um, that when, and the people of the land choose one of their men and make him their watchman. That's what these three churches have done. They've chosen these three men and made that man their watchman. They're basically saying, you know something, we're relying on you. Uh, you know, Jamie, David, Tim, you know, we're relying on you to lead our congregation at this season of life. You know, and, and, and we're waiting for the Lord's return. It could be at any time, but we're, we're waiting for we We had faithful watchmen that served here before. We're thankful for them. But now that they've either moved on retirement or they've moved on to another uh, posting. And when I say retirement, that's a joke. There's no such thing. You're just called a different work, right, Alex? <laughs> And, uh, you know, and Stan. So uh, the fact of the matter is, um, but now you have a watchman for this time. And so that's a really big responsibility. I know myself, I don't, especially in these changing times, if you notice the, the, the terminology in this passage, it talks about the sword coming on the land. And, uh, and people will uh, be victim to this if they are not warned by this person who was appointed as their watchman. And there's a warning, and, and they use the, the metaphor of the trumpet, the trumpet sounding. Of course, we know that uh, that immediately brings forth the imagery of the Lord's coming, the trump will sound. And, and uh, even in the Old Testament, you know, the shofar, the blowing of the shofar, it meant different things to gather the people and this type of thing. So there's a warning about that. And the, the pastor um, comes to his pulpit and uh, to, to deliver the word of God Sunday by Sunday by Sunday. It's usually Sunday morning, right, Jamie? <laughs> Tonight is Sunday night. So, you know, and that's not something that you can just... Uh, shoot from the hip on that. There's, there's preparation in the study. People in the congregation need to appreciate that the pastor, um, in addition to the pastoral calling, the visiting, the, the hospital calling, you know, the rites of passage, this type of thing, there's the importance of the pastor having the time to be in the study, to, to pour over the scriptures, to be in prayer, and to, to sense the, the times that we're living in. And they're getting more and more dangerous. They're getting more and more perilous. You know, there's more uh, laxity. Even in the church, we're, we're finding this. It's the responsibility of being the watchman has never been greater than it is right here in 2019. And so Ezekiel makes no bones about it. You know, if the sword's coming against the line and the watchman blows the trumpet to warn the people, then if anyone hears the trumpet but does not take warning and the sword comes and takes his life, his blood will be on his own head. Since he heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning, his blood would be on his own head. I don't know any pastor that doesn't grieve over people not heeding the warning. Not every message is, God loves you and has a great plan for your life. Some of it is, you're sinning, you're wrong, you need to turn around, you're going the wrong direction. You know, in, in the passage that Susan read for us was uh, 2 Timothy 4, 1 to 5. I believe it's 2 Timothy 4, 2, where most versions say, preach the word, be ready in season, out of season, correct, rebuke, exhort. The Amplified Bible says, there's a line there that says, show them in what way they are wrong. Oh, pastors, we just love to preach those messages, especially right before Christmas. Don't expect any Christmas gifts that year. Not if you preach one of those messages. You know, so this whole thing, it's hard to preach that. You know, how do you say to someone, I don't know how to tell you this in so many words, but man, you are on a ship going nowhere. What you're, you're making a big mess of your life. I remember a young lady, she's in her early 30s now in our town, and, and she was just making some bad choices back when she was a, a teenager in our church. And, and it just, oh, it was, I was just turning up inside. I remember her parents had me come to her house and talk to her. She never looked at me in the eye. She looked at the rug the whole time and she was like, <sighs> you know, she just wanted me out of there. The only reason she was even putting up with me because I was in her parents' house and, you know, I was invited by them. And I thought, oh, the whole time I thought, man, this is so hard to say this. And, and I thought to myself, I'm not winning any votes with this young lady in, in what I'm saying, but I, I, I love her too much in the Lord to, to, to dumb down this message. And, you know, she ended up, she still sowed some wild oats after that. She, she, she went her own way for a while, but then she came around. She and her husband are wonderfully serving the Lord. She's such a bold Christian now. She's got three young children. She's such a bold Christian now. You'd never know she was at all like that at one time. And I think, oh, am I ever glad I didn't soft pedal that? And I know the pastor, and there's several pastors here tonight. This is a tough job, but it's one that God has called us to do. Ezekiel also says, about the person that did respond, since he heard the sound of the trumpet, sorry, but, uh, sorry, the second one, if he had taken warning, he would have saved himself. We love it when people hear the warning and they say, you know something, 
Uh, I've had people say to me, I, I don't like what you said to me. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, you know, I was really offended by what you said there, Pastor, but it was probably what I needed to hear. And, you know, you're shaking your boots the whole time because you're thinking, you know, I don't want to turn them off by what I say. You know, our pastors here, they've come here and they're, they're you know, they're newer at, their, at these particular posts. None of them are newer in ministry. Well, sort of. David's been in the marketplace ministry. He's newer to the pastoral ministry. But, you know, the fact is um, we, we, we're trying to have a, when you're a pastor to a newer church, when you're just there, you're kind of like, Dale Carnegie said, you're trying to win friends and influence people. You know, you, you're, you're not trying to turn people off the first uh, sermon series you preach from your church. So, so there's a balance there. And yet, to be faithful to the word of God, you have to preach and address the times. He goes on to say, and there's a warning to the watchman. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet to warn the people, and the sword comes and takes the life of one of them, that man will be taken away because of his sin. But I will hold the watchman accountable for his blood. Again, I don't know of any pastor that doesn't go home some nights. Maybe they had a bad meeting with somebody, a bad visit, and the person shrugged them off and, and thinking, oh, and you're just thinking, oh, God, I hope they repent. I hope they, I hope they have a change of heart. Oh, and we, you lose sleep over it. I remember when I first came to Wall Street, I went to visit this um, man in the hospital. I just looked in the, the hospital list, and the guy was listed as Baptist. I don't know what part of Baptist he was apart from going to a buffet. I don't think it was, he'd been to a Baptist church in his life. But anyway, I went to this man, and so I, I said, oh, hi. And I acted like I thought he was a member of our church. I've only been there about a week. I said, hey, uh, is Pastor Brian just come to visit you? And he goes, oh. He goes, I don't know. He said, well, I'm kind of new to the community. And, I, and he says, oh. And everything was a one word. And he said, well, how are you? Fine. He wasn't. I said, uh, so fine. I thought, this is going nowhere. So I said, hey, um, do you mind if I just, could I just pray with you? I mean, that's usually the safety valve every pastor. I mean, who, who turns that down, right? Hey, can I just pray with you? No. <laughs> My goodness. That wasn't any seminary class. When the guy turns down your, your trump card, uh, I pray. I said, oh, and I think I was so surprised. I said, really? He said, really? I don't want you to pray for me. <laughs> I left there. I was like, wow, that was brutal. And, uh, and he died that night. And I remember thinking, I didn't know the man. That was the only meeting I ever had. With him. I knew nothing about him. It bothered me. I thought, God, should I have pushed? Should I have, uh, you know, should I have been a little more forceful with the guy? You know, of course, I had no idea that he was, he was nearing. Him. God, should I have? But the, and see, that, so the, the watchman, the pastor, doesn't always have that crystal ball, you know. He doesn't always have that opportunity to know, I know I should do this. Sometimes it's just, the Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? Ezekiel concluded this little thing by this little section by saying, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. You can never go wrong, and I'm preaching to the choir here, especially these pastors that were inducting me, but you can never go wrong if you preach what God's word said. Our car culture's changing like uh, every time the wind blows, and the wind's blowing a lot tonight. You know, so our culture's changing, ideas of what the Bible means, you know, this type of thing, nuances, people's got their opinion. If you're from Hollywood or you're a famous athlete, everyone wants your opinion whether you know what you're talking about or not. But we can never steer clear, uh, sorry, we can, we can never steer out of the way if we, we would just stick with the word of God. He said, I've made you a watchman. You have a responsibility. Don't blow this. You can't just come here and, and pass your church and think, no problem, I'll just get paid in the 15th and the 30th of the month, just punch my card, I'll just put in my time, it's no big deal. No, I made you a watchman, you've got a responsibility, so hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. He doesn't say it, but it's implied. And if you don't, they may not take heed to the sin in their life and they may end up in hell instead of in heaven. I don't want that on my conscience. No pastor wants it on their conscience. Sometimes people make choices regardless of our warning, but we at least need to give them a fighting chance. I'm grateful for the men that were inducting. I think they're all good men of God. I know Tim the least, a little bit I know about him. I think he's a fine man, what people have told me about him. And I'm getting to know David quite a bit. I've known Jamie, he and I have been friends for years. I think these are great men of God that we've got in our Western Association. I love our Western Association. I think we've got some great pastors in our Western Association. I think they take their calling seriously. And uh, I'm grateful, too, to our mentors, the ones who have um, who've retired and, and served so long and have, have 
paved the way for those of us who are still serving here. You know, I followed a man that was 22 years in the church I was in, and boy, am I ever glad for the seed that he sowed uh, and the battles he fought ahead of me because it made my job a lot easier. You know, so um, we're going to be inducting these men tonight. I'm glad you're here on a, on a kind of a wintry night. I want us to pray, and then we're going to get right into our, our induction. Father, we just thank you for the warnings of Scripture. We're thankful, of course, for the blessings and uh, the, the good stuff, the candy, the, the, the chocolate, and, and the, the peaches and cream. But, Lord, there's also difficult passages in Scripture that every pastor must address as well. And I pray for sheep to be able to, uh, especially the, particularly the sheep in these three congregations, Grace Baptist Church, Banwell Community Church, Wheatley Baptist Church, that they would heed the instruction that their pastors are giving, that they would uphold these men and their families in prayer on a regular basis, ask the Holy Spirit to speak to their hearts so that they preach the whole counsel of God, that they have the time each week to diligently pour over and pray over the scriptures to do their study so they can feed the flock of God when we gather on a Sunday morning and at other times. Father, I pray that these men will be bold in their witness for you, committed, devoted to the task at hand. They have been called by the people in their churches to be a watchman over their flock for such a time as this. May they be faithful in that calling. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this truly is a, a special occasion as we induct three pastors into three congregations. We've gathered tonight together in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the head of our church. We've gathered to commission Pastor David Page, Reverend Jamie Tiffin, and Reverend Tim Nuttall into the ministry of Wheatley Baptist, Grace Baptist, and Banwell Community Churches, respectively. Gentlemen, I'm going to ask if you would stand and come up to the front. And actually, you know, if, if your spouse is here with you tonight, they come up with you as well. Because we do induct the pastor into ministry, but it's never a one-person job. Gentlemen, it is our belief that the calling in the Christian ministry, and to particular service within it, is both, God, is both God and the church. It is inward leading and outward calling, answering to each other. And so I ask you, are you persuaded that you are truly called to this particular ministry? To seek to fulfill the purposes of God among the people of the church to which you are being commissioned today? I am so persuaded. <laughs> to the people of Wheatley Baptist Church, Grace Baptist Church, and Banwell Community Church, are you persuaded that the candidates before you is the person whom God has brought at this time and into this place to be a pastor among you and a leader in your ministry. Will you please indicate your positive response by standing? Because you, David, Jamie, and Tim, and you, the people of Wheatley Baptist, Grace Baptist, and Banwell Community Churches, are the ones who are giving yourselves to shared ministry in these respective churches and communities. We invite you to respond to each other. We're going to enter into a dialogue. We're going to go one church at a time. So I'm going to ask you, if you'll be seated for a moment. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Dave, would you stay forward and we'll ask the others to please be seated. We're going to enter into a bit of a, a dialogue because our God is a God of covenant relationship. A covenant with Abraham, a covenant with David, a covenant with the church through Christ Jesus. The church is no different. It's a covenant relationship between people, between a pastor and a flock. And so I'm going to ask if the people from Wheatley would stand and we'll dialogue. And I think the words are up here, so uh, David, you can see them there. And, and there, the words will be on the screen as we respond as a congregation and so, I'm going to invite the people, uh, the congregation of Wheatley Baptist, if you would uh, dialogue with your pastor. Thank you. 
Baptist Church as a people among whom I am intended by God to live, to serve as pastor, and to share with in ministry. It is in this belief that I have accepted the call to your fellowship, and it's in this belief that I now affirm my acceptance of your invitation.
with Christ as my helper. I will try to do all of these things. Now I ask, now I ask for a pledge of your encouragement and support. Do you understand yourselves to be, sorry, do you understand yourselves to be sharing God's ministry with me in the fellowship of this church? Will you be sensitive to my needs and to the needs of my family? and seek to minister to me as well as with me? Will you assure me of your confidence, your encouragement, your patience, and your prayers? And finally, will you commit yourselves to the task which will give shape and energy to our ministry in this place? To all of these questions we affirm, with Christ's help, we will try to do all of these things we accept you, J.B. Tiffin, as a person of Christian commitment and God-given skills. We accept you as a pastor among us and a leader in our ministry. I accept you, the people of this church, as people of Christian commitment and God-given skills. I accept you as the people God has called me to serve and as co-workers in our ministry together. Thank you, Mr. Cameron, and uh, stand. You may just be out of your question. We believe that you, Tim Mel, are the person intended by God to be a pastor among us and a leader in our ministry. It is in this belief that we have called you to our fellowship, and it is in this belief that we now affirm our I believe that you, the congregation of Bangwell Community Church, are the people among whom I am intended by God to live, to serve as a pastor, and to share with the ministry. And it is in this belief that I have, ex I have accepted the call to be your, well, sorry about that, I have, I have accepted the call to your fellowship. And it is in this belief that I now affirm my acceptance of your invitation. We ask you, Tim Mel, will you minister to us using the gifts God has entrusted to you? Will you give of yourself by the strength and grace of Jesus Christ our Lord? Will you be sensitive to the needs and possibilities of all our people, young and old, singly or in families, those new to our church and those long affiliated with it? Will you help us to grow to more Christian maturity?
to each other. As an expression of our support to declare our joy and confidence in the ministry we share, we rise to stand with you. Would you please stand? David, Jamie, Tim, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, on behalf of the Western Association of Baptist Churches, and with the authority given to me by this congregation assembled here, I declare you to be the pastors of Wheatley Baptist, Grace Baptist, and Banwell Community Churches, respectively. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. And since no one person or group of people is sufficient for the commitments made today, we'll call upon the Lord in prayer. And I'm just going to invite any pastors in the room, if they would come forward. And gentlemen, would you step forward? And, and uh, your, your, your wives as well. Come forward. I'm going to ask our pastors to come forward and lay hands upon these, these couples. <laughs> tonight commission these men these couples to service in this your church to these three congregations you have called them to be shepherds to shepherd your flock it's a big undertaking not one to be taken lightly and I know that they don't Lord God, we pray for the anointing of your Holy Spirit upon each one of them. Lord God, that they would lead in truth, with courage and conviction. Lord God, that they would lead these churches forward into your service, to glorify your name. Lord God, we pray that you would strengthen them day by day as they will come under attack from the enemy. But Lord God, greater are you than any who are called. Lord God, we commission these men, we commission these families to your service. We pray your blessing upon them, your anointing upon them. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people say, Amen. <laughs> Pastor to congregation, congregation to pastor. It was very key that it said that we were pastors, shepherds to the flock. It didn't say ministers. I remember Graham Barnes, my mentor, and his pastorate at Chatham Baptist that taught me this wonderful definition. He said, you know, our calling is of pastoring, of shepherding, of preaching the word of God. Ministers, by definition, is anyone that knows something about Jesus, his love, his acceptance, his forgiveness that somebody else doesn't know and we're willing to share. We are all ministers, and we need to take those commitments seriously, that it is a, a team family situation. And so we endorse you as pastors to the ongoing work together to minister to the generation, the communities, and the world to which we are called. And may we all be faithful ministers of Christ Jesus. But it's only by his grace that we stand, amen? amen. So let's sing about that amazing grace.
invited to our multi-purpose room to be able to have some fellowship together around the table, standing up, mixing and mingling, and enjoying some good food, good conversation, and continue with the commitment together. I'm going to add a blessing upon that so that once we get in there, we can go ahead and dig in. Uh, but at the same time, I'm going to ask that maybe the pastors, myself and Ruth and, and their spouses, that we could kind of go first so that we can meet and greet when we're all together. Let's pray. Father, for the purpose why we are gathered, may you now empower us to shine, to go forth with the authority that you have given to us, to preach, to teach, to love, accept, forgive as we have been accepted and forgiven by you. Therefore, we stand in an amazing grace. For the food and for the fellowship that is taking part, would you bless the food to our bodies? Bless the hands who have prepared it, those who are serving it, those who will clean up after it. For in doing so, they are blessing us. And your word says it is good to bless them. So we ask a blessing upon them. To all of our congregations, Father, Continue to shine your light in through and in and through us for your glory and your glory alone. We pray this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said.